Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today. Check out the links in YouTube's video description. They're very informative and useful, and there's a lot of them. In fact, it only takes me about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour to do the recording. It takes hours to put those links up to convert them over and to do it. And that's why I've had wrist problems. So, you know, and then when I stopped doing it, people were complaining about it. Well, that's why I stopped. I The whole point is to get the links up there. So... Either way, the wrists are doing a lot better, so thank you for your prayers. Thank you um, for those that have helped me out recently. All right, so we're talking about clashing with civil civilizations. This is obviously not just some grassroots um, thing that's going on right now with uh, the, the embassy being attacked at right around 9-11. Um, uh, this, uh, all this stuff coming out, the anti-Islam film, uh, possibly Zionist thing going on uh, to put more hatred on the United States as if we didn't need any more. But uh, really to uh, to awaken, right? To awaken the ignorant uh, people's frame of mind. Their, I, you know, I don't like using the word racism or bigotry, but just ignorance. It's really just ignorance. And um, I'm talking about uh, Western people and Eastern people that, by the way, the media are basically pitted against each other and their governments don't help. But like everything else, there is order out of this chaos, and that's how they're able to control you. Because if you decide, well, you know what, I really don't give a fuck what's going on. I just care about what's going on in my own neighborhood. I do care about fluoride in the water. I do care about police um, harassing people, and little old ladies at the airports. That's what I care about, you know. But unfortunately, they don't. Um, you know, they're worried about, oh, you know, we're going to have Mitt, the good old boy, Mitt, you know, the hunter, the... Uh, the good old conservative Mitt, you know, pro-gun right Mitt, a local boy getting him into office, right? Or Obama, you know, who's going to bring change by the push of a button. About people who are being bullied. About people that are thousands of miles away from them who they've never met, will never meet, don't even understand their culture, and say, oh, those people are being oppressed. I think we better go bomb them. Well, at the same time... The class that they belong to, the middle class, is being systematically destroyed, incrementally through the generations, being deteriorated. Their health is going to shit. Uh, Society is going to shit. But uh, they care about the most. They care about the stupidest things, like footballs on football games at high schools on Friday. So, with neoconservative warmongers behind a recent inflammatory film titled "The Innocence of Muslims" and their counterparts amongst radical sectarian extremists leading the violent protests across the Middle East, it would almost seem as if the publication of insulting cartoons by a French paper, Charlie Hebdo, was part of a grand strategy to create a manufactured conflict between Islam and the West, setting the stage for more overt military operations to take over faltering covert operations in Syria and beyond, because they may not be going as well as they want. Talking about uh, the CIA intelligence agencies funding and arming and guiding uh, those uh, rebels, terrorists. Steve Klein, uh, I guess this is one of his many names, Innocence of Muslims, he says the film promoter says he remains outspoken on Islam. And it's drawn the attention of civil libertarians who say he's a hate monger. So I'm not really sure what a civil libertarian is. Uh, I thought libertarians are about uh, speaking your mind and stuff like that, but... Um, then we have this other guy from France, Offices of French Magazine, that published cartoons mocking Prophet Muhammad guarded by riot police as it plans to release a new satirical image. So I covered this before. Um, his office has been firebombed, not just last year, many times. This guy, go look up him, uh, his uh, thing in Wikipedia, and you'll just see um, that one after another, his offices have been firebombed. He's nothing but a... I don't know what you would call it, dude, but he just incites all kinds of stuff, so sensationalist, maybe. But hey, Fran you know, they're going to guard him. The, the French police are going to guard this guy. And uh, France to ban Paris demonstration against the movie, so they're not even going to allow him to demonstrate at all, and they're going to guard this guy. And then you have Newsweek, uh, says here, Newsweek cover accused of mocking uh, Muslims. I guess this picture right here of them crying and stuff like that. And, you know, it's nothing really uh, too bad or anything, but uh, when you just, again, look at their past of what they do, there is a reason behind it. And they defended their latest coverage. Of the so in the past, they said, what, um, it's not the first time that the editor Tina Brown has courted controversy recently. Uh, she ran coverage showing digitally manipulated Princess Diana at 50 
Barack Obama with a rainbow-colored halo as America's first gay president and a woman eating asparagus in a sexually provocative manner. New York City subway ad or advertisement, jihadists are savages, so post her to appear in 10 stations next week. Says in any war between the civilized man and the savage, support the civilized man. The ads then call on readers to support Israel and defeat jihad, New York Times reports. So you want to talk about hypocrisy and double standards. Transportation officials tried to stop the ads from appearing, but a federal court ruled in the ads' favor, really in Israel and Zionist favor, in July, citing the First Amendment rights. Yep, First Amendment, speak your rights. Unless you're demonstrating against raids on raw milk farmers or fracking or genetically modified food, which in that case you're going to be treated as an insurgent or a terrorist or um, anything of the like. And you could be thrown in the federal prison uh, for um, terrorist activity or, you know, just one of the many laws that are on the books, such as not having a permit, um, inciting violence, um, any all those laws that are put into place so people don't have the right speech, right? If you're not saying the right things, like you're not, and then you can be abducted off the street, hog tied and uh, pepper sprayed, and that's it. We're talking about what An attempt to trigger a class clash of civilization. So this Sumas Mill, I'm not sure how the name is, but uh, this article says it's not about a lousy movie. It says why do they hate us? That's the question. That's what many Americans asked after 9/11. Obviously to their country's role in decades of coups, tyranny, sanctions, regimes, and occupations across the Middle East, uh, writes this uh, Milne in The Guardian. Now they're asking the same about the protest group in the Muslim world with just as little self-awareness. Sure, anti-Islam film Innocence of Muslims lit the fuse, but it would be absurd not to recognize that the scale of the response isn't just about a repulsive video. People are protesting because this insult is once again to come from an arrogant hyperpower that has invaded subjugated and humiliated the Arab and Muslim world for decades, um, says the writer. Since 9-11, the U.S. and its allies have attacked and occupied Afghanistan and Iraq, bombed Libya, killed thousands in drones attacks in Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia, imposed devastating sanctions and torture with impunity. impunity. In other words, they get away with it. And after 11 years of war on terror, the only surprise is that there aren't more violent anti-U.S. and anti-Western protests. So, very, very good uh, article there. Afghanistan, NATO airstrike kills eight women in Lagman. At least eight women have died in the NATO airstrike in Afghanistan's eastern province. They have conceded, NATO has conceded, that between five and eight civilians have died as it targeted insurgents and offered condolences. Sorry. We're so sorry. We apologize. U.S.-led forces kill an Afghan uh, citizen in overnight raid in Afghanistan. So remember, I was just talking about this, about uh, people getting married and have their house, their brand new house, um, that probably the community built for them, uh, just completely bombed, right? U.S.-led forces have killed an Afghan citizen in an overnight attack on a wedding party in the country's eastern province. Incident occurred during a U.S.-led raid in the early hours of Friday. Said nine people were also arrested in the operation Noting that the operation was carried out with coordination of Afghan officials. They blamed the foreign forces for the attack on the wedding party, accused them of mistreating the civilians and even seizing the bride's jewelry and cash. This attack comes a few days after a similar operation in Alangar District, a Logman province, where U.S.-led troops killed seven women and a child and injured 19 others. U.S. tortures inmates in Afghanistan's Bagram prison, says Human Rights Group. So they accuse the U.S. of torturing prisoners in the Bagram Detention Center in Afghan's northeastern province. The long-awaited pullout. U.S. pulls out 33,000 troops from Afghanistan, says Panetta. So I wonder where they're going to be going, hmm? Maybe the Pacific, uh, somewhere else? I don't know. One of these comments, yes, the troops have left for the next war for Israel. Something the American military members must start learning to say is no. The only way the American government will be stopped is if the military refuses to fight wars for Israel. And they'll probably just replace them with um, with mercenaries, private contractors. So McCain has spoken and Panetta has answered. Now, I think McCain's just a little late there. They were going to do it anyways. So he comes out finally on September 19th. Uh, you should consider leaving Afghanistan, says McCain. But either way, as they pull out of Afghanistan, at least supposedly... Remember this article, a U.S. military base in Uzbekistan to counter Russia and Central Asia. It goes on and it says that, what? Um, to accommodate warehouses storing weapons and military hardware following the U.S. forces withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2014, they could establish a so-called operative reaction center in Uzbekistan. 
Although Americans claim that they are fighting against the group that they created, the Taliban in Afghanistan today, it will be them who, by deploying their, deploying their facility in Uzbekistan, will lead Taliban members there. This problem also has military economic component. Americans know how to count money. It is more profitable for them to store weapons withdrawn from Afghanistan nearby than drag them all the way to America. President Karzai of Afghanistan announced 10 U.S. British-backed governors citing corruption. It says mostly those seen as having unduly close relationships with NATO military leadership have been ousted. Then talking Turkey, Turkey dreams of new Ottoman Empire, says Syrian president. Assad lashed out at Turkey for supporting insurgents fighting against his government, saying that his ambitious neighbor is dreaming of a new Ottoman Empire. He said that Turkey was unconcerned about the interests of its people, focused solely on the amb these ambitions. Then I saw this article from the Associated Press. Turkey and Egypt seek alliance, so Mideast ambitions. The image of the Ottoman sultan glowered at the gridlock from the highway billboard in the Egyptian capital. Hands clasped his feathered headgear and golden-hued epaulets in elegant contrast to the grind of traffic below. The poster for a Turkish-made movie about the 1453 fall of Constantinople recalled the early feats of an empire that eventually ruled the Middle East and beyond. The descendants of yesterday's sultans and pharaohs, so to speak, also have ambitions of an outsized role for the respective countries. Each wants to speak for the Middle East. Then we have three former Turkish generals jailed uh, 20 years over coup plot. So a commenter says that uh, this was by way of the U.S. CIA invading their country, and suddenly they started to realize that the masses of Americans installed themselves on Turkish ground and wouldn't leave anymore says when Turkish generals and military personnel were skeptical towards the U.S. presence on Turkish soil, they started dying in an unexplainable chain of helicopter and plane crashes, decided to act and found the one who opened the U.S. thug's door and the person called Erdogan. 21 CIA agents have been convicted in Italy. 23 Americans found guilty, 21 of whom were CIA agents. They congratulate those in the justice system in Italy who pursued this case. They face political opposition and personal travail. Veteran says his superiors tried to silence him. An Iraqi war vet claims in court that his superiors drugged and kidnapped him to keep him from telling the press about Abu Ghraib prison abuses and that Saddam Hussein's still missing WMDs were made in the USA. Then we got this one. Canada deports Iraq war objector to the United States. Kimberly Rivera faces years in jail for desertion. She became an outspoken critic of the Iraq war after a tour of duty in 2006. The Canadian government rejected her request for asylum. Kimberly now awaits punishment for refusing to return to Iraq. So the comment boards, of course, here's a thought. If you're against the war, do not sign up with an organization that goes to war. You Good, now she can get her punishment and stay at Fort Leavenworth. She has disgraced her family and the army. Laughing out loud, you sign your life away to the military, then complain when you ask to do your job you were paid for. Rot away in jail, you useless scum. So to the, my, my, my uh, comment to those people is go fuck yourselves. You know, it's like I volunteered. I volunteered to join the military because I thought it was the right thing to do. It's because we were brainwashed at... Those are the people that we're supposed to look up to to defend our freedoms, right? Well, by the time that's why they draft young people because when you're older, then you start to realize what it's actually supporting. That's why they get you while you're young. I grew up in Rambo, GI Joe, the A Team, all that stuff, right? Everything that condoned it and promoted it—the clothes, the costumes, the fake guns, evil dictators everywhere, right? And this is the thing. People like those douchebags that leave those comments about, oh, yeah, you, you know, lock away the key, hope you rot in jail. Um, the thing about them is that they actually believe in the voting system. They'll go and vote. They believe that they, they have a fucking say about things. Well, this is the thing. If you join the military, you, you at least go in and you try it and stuff like that, right? And you realize it's not what you were told, then the contract is null and void. You should be able to leave. She had to desert. She couldn't go back to the U.S. She had to go somewhere else. So like with voting, if all these people that say, well, if you didn't vote, you don't have a say. Well, if you didn't serve in the military, then shut the fuck up. And if you did, then you should know better that you serve a system of evil. And I'm so glad that I did, got out right before we were about to get deployed. We were supposed to get deployed twice when I was in an F-18 unit to Iraq. And um, both times, got all my anthrax shots, even though they didn't have it because it was good for money. And uh, twice, we didn't go. Why? Because a unit that had just crashed a fucking jet on our base 
had got sent over before us. That's how the military works, and that's why I said, go fuck yourselves.